tired of your wash and goes not coming out popping? Girl, I got you. Hey y'all, it's Deandra. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about why your wash and goes are not coming out popping. I'm gonna tell y'all about all the mistakes that I see that people make, including the mistakes that I used to make, and basically just tell y'all how I have perfected my wash and go. So this video is gonna be 10 mistakes that I see that a lot of y'all are making, and the number one thing is you're not using enough water. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that I do not do my hair on soaking wet hair, but I do style my hair when it is damp. Trying to do your wash and go when your hair is dry or with just a tiny bit of water is just not going to work. Wash and goes more than any other style require a nice amount of water because if you think about it, the point of a wash and go is to define your natural curl pattern and when is your hair the most defined? Probably when it's soaking wet. Now this is also the time when you want to take your hair's porosity into account. I have low porosity hair, which means that it's a little bit difficult to get water and moisture into my hair, but once it's in my strands, it stays there. So because of that, my hair does not have to be soaking wet in order to have really good wash and go results. But if you feel like you've been doing your wash and goes on damp hair and you haven't been getting the definition that you want, maybe you should try soaking your hair down first. And same thing for the other way. If you've been soaking your hair down and your results are not coming out popping, maybe try letting your hair dry some and then try applying the products. Basically with all of my styles, I let my hair air dry a bit before I start adding in products and I just keep my spray bottle so that if I do need to go back and add in a little bit of water, I can do that. So the second mistake that I see that people make is that your sections are too big. We all know that you have to work in sections when you're dealing with natural hair, but with a wash and go, you definitely don't want your sections to be too big because it's gonna be difficult for you to define each curl if you just have a way too big of a section. Now, I do not work in teeny tiny sections. In the beginning, when I was first learning how to do my wash and goes, I worked in some pretty small sections, but now I do about three sections in each of my four sections. And that is the way that works the best for me and my hair. But if you feel like you need to do maybe five sections in each of your four sections, then do that. The point is that you want your hair to be sectioned enough for you to be able to coat every single strand with your product and get all of your curls as defined as possible. The next mistake that I see a lot of people make is that they're not using a gel. I know that some people are not big fans of using gel. However, if you want your hair to be super defined, if definition is what you are going for, sis, you're probably gonna have to reach for a gel. Now, if you want more of a fluffy wash and go, then you can probably stick to just moisturizers and stylers. But if definition is what you want, then you're gonna have to get a gel. You're going to have to layer your products. So in the beginning of my natural hair journey, I pretty much only used one gel and that was Eco Styler. Y'all, back then I swore by Eco Styler gel. I would never use any other gel besides that one because it gave me the most hold and definition. And that is still true. Eco Styler does give you super, super defined curls. However, as time started to go on, I realized that I liked a lot more volume in my hair, a lot more movement in my hair, and that is why now I use my Uncle Funky's Daughter Curly Magic Gel. It is more of a medium hold gel. So if you are afraid of gels, do not be afraid. There are different levels, there are different holds. You can try different ones and see which one works the best for your hair. So the fourth mistake, the products that you're trying to use just don't go well together. I always like to use a moisturizing product first and then follow up with my gel on top. 
but sometimes product combinations just don't mix and you end up with bad results, puffy hair, flakes, all these sorts of things. So if you feel like that is happening, then you might just need to switch out your products. And it might not even be the products. It might just be that you are not using enough of the products or maybe you're using too much of the products. You have to kind of experiment to figure out which one of those it might be. So number five, you're using the wrong method. Now when I say method, I'm talking about shingling, raking, the praying hands method. All of these are different techniques that naturals have developed for doing your washing up. However, you have to find the right method for you. So the method that works the best for me or the method that works the best for another YouTuber might not be the method that works the best for you. Some people swear by shingling. Personally, I have tried to shingle a few times, but it takes a whole lot of time for me. And for the most part, I don't care enough to take out the time to do it. But I will say that shingling does give you probably the most definition that you're going to get. However, I just choose to just rake my hair, but I've also been doing wash and goes for years now. So if you're first starting out, then maybe you should try shingling first, just to kind of get used to how to apply the products and how to get the product to be evenly distributed through all of your hair strands. But regardless, you just have to find what works for you. Don't just try to follow what everybody else is doing because it might not work. So number six, you're trying to do a wash and go on tangled hair. Y'all, you cannot style your hair while it is tangled, okay? If your hair is tangled, you're gonna end up with a frizzy mess. A lot of the frizz that you probably see with curly hair is because there are some knots and tangles. So you wanna make sure that you are detangling your hair as you are styling it. I personally like to finger detangle, but if you like to use a comb or a Zimmin brush or whatever detangling tool you like, make sure that you're using that. Cause not only is that gonna make sure that your curls come out defined, but it's also just gonna keep your hair from being matted at the end after it's dried. Number seven, maybe your ends are just dead or maybe your hair is just dead. So y'all, I currently have a fresh trim. I just straightened my hair and gave myself a nice trim. And so my curls are super, super popping. And that happens every single time I do a trim, which is why it is so important to keep your ends trimmed. I promise once you do that, your curls are gonna be popping like they ain't never popped before. <laughs> So I'm just showing y'all the way that my ends look right now. You can see that my curls are so pretty and defined at the bottom. And for the most part, if your ends don't look clean, if your ends, the curls are kind of wonky, it's gonna make your whole wash and go style not look the best. So make sure that your ends are neat. Now, it might not just be your ends. It might be your hair in general. It might be certain sections of your hair. If you feel like your curls are just not popping in general, and maybe they used to pop more, your problem might be heat damage. And of course, the only real way to fix heat damage is just to cut those parts of your hair off. You can do this slowly if you want to. You don't have to big chop. But regardless, your wash and go is only gonna come out as good as what your natural curls look like. So always keep that in mind. And use a heat protectant when you're straightening your hair. Please do that, y'all. So the eighth mistake is that you're not drying your hair properly. So you can either let your hair air dry or you can just sit under a hooded dryer. Either way, the point is that you want your hair to be fully set before you start messing with it. So after you apply all of your products, do not keep touching and messing with your hair. That is an absolute no-no. Every time that you go in and pick at your hair after you've styled it, you're creating frizz. So instead, apply your products and leave your hair alone. I like to air dry. I always air dry my hair overnight, 
But if you're a person that you know you're not going to be able to keep your hands out of your hair, then you should probably opt to sit under a hooded dryer instead of air drying. So for this wash and go, I actually did both of those things. I air dried my hair for a few hours, but then I finished up drying my hair under my hooded dryer. Just for the purpose of this video, I had to come on here and film. So I ain't have time to be letting my hair air dry all day and night. And this also goes for when you're stretching your hair. You don't wanna go in with your blow dryer to try to stretch your roots when your hair is not fully dry that's gonna cause a whole lot of unnecessary frizz. So just wait until your hair is dry first. I like to stretch my hair using duck clips that I put on the ends. And I have several videos about how I use these duck clips to stretch my hair. But when I use these duck clips, I leave them on my hair until it is fully dry. So that means that yes, sometimes I end up sleeping in them, but that's necessary because if you go in and try to manipulate those clips, for one thing, you're not gonna get the most stretch that you can get if you take your clips out prematurely, but also it's just more manipulation, more room for frizz. So leave your hair alone. So now we're on to the ninth mistake. You're not following a consistent regimen. So I know some naturals do not like to follow a specific regimen and that is fine if it works, but if it doesn't work, then maybe you should start looking into that. And when I say a consistent regimen, I mean shampooing every week or every two weeks, whatever you decide on, deep conditioning every time you wash your hair, applying your products soon after that. You want to create consistency for your hair. By doing this, you're in a way training your hair to do what you want it to do. It's kind of like being in a relationship. You don't want a man that just shows up when he feels like it, comes around when he wants to, like no. I'm not gonna be able to take you seriously. Like, you gotta be consistent. <laughs> That's the same way with your hair. You have to find a nice routine that works for you. So for me, that looks like washing my hair, deep conditioning my hair, styling my hair right after I'm done deep conditioning. And I do that either every week or every other week. But not only does following a regimen give you really nice wash and goes, but it's also just important for the overall health of your hair, for the overall growth of your hair, you have to follow a routine. And now we have made it to my 10th and final tip. And that is that wash and goes, just like natural hair in general, it takes trial and error. You really can't expect your wash and goes to come out super popping if you just started doing them. It takes practice, and I mean a lot of practice. The reason why my wash and goes come out perfect every single time that I do them is because I found the regimen that works for me, I found the products that work for me, the method that works for me, and that did not happen overnight. It took time, it took me experimenting, it took a lot of practice and patience, and you guys are gonna have to have that too. You have to find what your hair likes. You can't try to copy what somebody else does because even though we are here to give you inspiration, you still have to do the work and you still have to find out what's gonna work the best for you. And just don't give up. Like I promise y'all, all of these YouTubers that you see, they went through the same stages that y'all are going through. We did not always have super popping hair, super popping wash and goes, this and that. No, we had to work our way up to that point. So just let that be encouragement to just keep trying, keep experimenting, and I promise it'll come. So those are all the tips that I have for y'all. I hope that you found this video really helpful. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. I would love for you to be a part of this family. If you have any mistakes that you would like to share or any tips that you would like to share for your wash and goes, make sure that you leave those down below. I would love to see them. Thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all next Friday in my next video. Bye. Thank you.